that that's not your kitchen, Morning, I'm assuming. You? That's the set, is it, you're on? This is this is the set, yes. I'm really glad we we came here because as you see, it, we couldn't have done this in just some uh, crappy kitchen anywhere. But we <laughs> no. are here on instead, the actual set. Instead you're in a really Madhouse. rather house. You're in a glamorous kitchen. Tell us about it. Tell us about the play and the yeah. setting. Um, so it's a play called Madhouse. It's a writer called Teresa Rebeck. Um, and yeah, it's about you guys sort of, it's a, I call it a dark comedy, but it's more than that. I mean, it's, it's got a lot of elements to it, but it basically is about this patriarch, almost this Dostoevsky and awful toad of a man who is holding his uh, youngest son, myself, uh, hostage to take care of him and um, the family sort of comes back to the home to deal with the inheritance and uh, my character is somewhat mentally unstable and has been in some mental asylums and the family sort of uses that as a punching bag but um, you know as I say like it's very dark themes but it uh, the play is very funny so ah now David yeah. I'm a little bit worried <laughs> for you now because you've just described it beautifully but in our research reading for this, it, you also said it was deeply personal. So I'm really hoping that you <laughs> don't have this experience in your own background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, my life has been funny, uh, if you look at it from the outside. I, uh, I, no, I mean, I have had, um, you know, I have had uh, things. One of the things I sat with Teresa early on, pre-pandemic, we talked about writing this play, and she was always interested in you know, death and hospice, uh, and I have always been interested in uh, mental illness to, or what society sort of deems mental illness to some degree, and I've struggled with that myself um, throughout the years. Uh, and so it was, you know, it was important for me to portray a sort of unsentimental and uh, very rich uh, portrayal of people that struggle with, um, with, I personally was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. and. You know, I, um, I, I think it's something that society, we sort of talk about and we say, like, we want to open a dialogue about this or we want to have a conversation about mental illness. And sort of this long-form two-and-a-half-hour play was my way of, you know, doing that, sort of showing all the complexities and all the layers. Because I think that, you know, whether you deal with it yourself, I think that you, I'm sure you know someone in your life, be it a coworker or a cousin or a family member who has struggled with mental health issues. And I think it's a really important thing that we start talking about more and being more out in the open with. So, you know, it's really my uh, privilege to come and be able to talk about that. How has it helped you, David, opening up that conversation and being so, so personal about it? Oh, God, not, not very much. It doesn't help me very much. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm, I, I, that's, that's not true. That's, uh, it, it is, it's very, it can be therapeutic yeah. to allow yourself this expression of a piece of yourself. But I always am, you know, whenever I work, I'm in constant, uh, you, you know, contact with an audience and knowing that it's for an audience is not for myself because I have my own therapist that I can go to and I can have those <laughs> cathartic sessions with. This is very much an artistic piece, like for other people to feel something, to have that catharsis. And David, how have you found, what's it like to perform on stage again after this awful time when everyone's been so separate and so isolated? What's it like, you talk about the audience and performing for them, what's that like for you? It's such a joy. I have to say, I was so, I mean, I think we all were pretty miserable uh, during the lockdowns. And, you know, I was so terrified that we'd never get together again like this. I remember when it first came around, I mean, the uncertainty of ever having large groups of people. And, and you know, in this theater, we have, I think it's 500 and something people a night come here uh, and just laugh and cry and stand and cheer. And it just, it feels like... You know, it feels like a rock concert. I mean, it's just so exciting to have people in a room again. It's what I live for. It's really what I got into this business for. 500 people in a room watching you. At the same time, there are probably hundreds of millions of people around the planet watching you and Stranger Things at the same time, which has been crazily successful, hasn't it? I mean, did you ever imagine when you signed up to it just how kind of mega it would be? Absolutely not changed. I got, 
you know, I mean, I got all these texts from everybody in the industry, anybody I'd ever met saying they loved the show. And then each season it seems to grow and get bigger and bigger. And, you know, I used to be, up until I was 40 years old, I was just kind of a character actor who would walk around the city and someone would recognize me once every two months and be like, hey, man, I like your work. But now uh, it can be very hard to walk around central London without... Um, you know, uh, middle school children running after me, <laughs> furiously yelling, Hopper! Hopper! <laughs> the kids absolutely love it, don't they, David? David, stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. David, one of the things I'm curious to know is your character in Stranger Things goes through a lot of physical transformation. It looks physically like it's been a really hard role for you at times. You know, at times, losing loads of weight, running through woods, it's very, very demanding. How's that been for you? I mean, it's demanding, as you say, but it's also kind of fun. Much weight and being hungry, that's the secret. If you're curious about the diet secret, it's just not eating food. I love that. I bet, I bet um, everybody asks you that, what's the diet yeah. secret? And it is literally, be hungry. It's, it's literally not eating food, yeah. Um, Is that why you're in the kitchen, and, you know, David? I mean, of course it was hard, but also like, what's that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a, lo a lovely kitchen. As you can see, it's very uh, dirty and miserable, though, so I don't think you really want to cook much here. <laughs> um, we're hearing that, that the next se season, season five, will be the final season of Stranger Things. Is that is that what you understand? I mean, can they, dare they finish it that soon? Because there must be demand for it to carry on forever at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I guess there is, but I I think they're pretty committed to ending it. You know, I think we we've talked right from the very beginning that there's a series out there that uh, overstay their welcome, and you love them, and then you know you're on season 12, and you're like, well, you know, is that show still on? And I think the Duffer Brothers never wanted that to happen, so they have a very clear ending, um, of which I think I know a little bit of. Oh. But it's, uh, it's oh. a very clear ending. So next season it will end and the thing, it will be done. You will know it is done. Oh, I cannot Sorry. wait for that. That is intriguing. Give there's us a, a clue. It's a very definite end. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to give. Are you kidding? The Netflix There's no one watching. It's okay. No one's listening. We won't tell anyone. Put me in a car. <laughs> yeah, no one's listening. <laughs> They're all asleep at the moment, David. They're in America. It's fine. Just us. Three mates <laughs> chatting. It's true, actually. It is. It's true. OK, OK, I will tell you. So at the end of Stranger... <laughs> oh, sorry. David, it is so great to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for chatting to us this morning. That's David Harbour. And we should tell you that you Madhouse is running at London's Ambassador's Theatre until the 4th of September. I think if he told us, he'd have lost more than his weight, wouldn't he? Lost his yes. job, I think. But there's a very definite ending. Yeah. <gasps> What does that mean? Hi, Amy. Shall I see you? Really enjoyed the first two seasons of Stranger Things. The third not so much, although I did binge watch it also. But the fourth hasn't caught my imagination. As a result, I'm only on the fifth episode.